Good day, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Concert Hall's live music channel. I'm Anna Spinskaya. I'm a pianist, and I'll be hosting the program today. Today's program is about competing on a virtual stage, the upcoming live finals of the auditions uh, for people to be selected to perform at the Laureate's Gala at the Wild Recital Hall at Carnegie Hall, and especially about removing the many, many barriers which musicians face on their way from the practice room to stage. And as always, we are live every day at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, and we are connecting musicians and the audiences in real time, performances and music news from around the globe. This season we're hosting a lot of auditions, competitions, and various other events um, which were created just as Virtual Concert Halls itself was created with a dual purpose. First of all, to help musicians achieve their next goals and to help, help music lovers and those who want to discover and enjoy new voices in performing music. The entire 2023-24 season serves those two purposes. We pave a path for musicians so anyone who aspires to be heard can get from their practice room and from their teacher's studio to the stages of their dreams, be it Carnegie Hall or performing with an orchestra, concert tour, recording and releasing an album. Every musician has the next goal they need to achieve. Um, as the old joke goes, how do you get to the Carnegie Hall? Of course, we all know the answer, practice, 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 but it's a very old joke, about 100 years old. But really, how do you get there in the modern um, performing and uh, present pre music presenting world? Since the inception of virtual concert halls, our large community of professional musicians, educators, music managers, publishers, audio video specialists, and many, many others worked tirelessly on removing the barriers and obstacles which musicians have to jump over on their way towards these goals. We haven't removed them all. That's impossible. But we're making progress. So auditions and sound expressive competitions are held now, as ever, on virtual stage of the virtual concert halls, which is meant to be the trampoline for auditionees and contestants to get where they really want to be. And that is on the tall and prestigious stages such as Carnegie Hall and um, stages where they can perform with orchestras and so on. So let's see what we have done so far with our promise to remove the barriers between the practice room, teacher's studio, and the stage. Um, let's go through what those barriers are. Geographical barriers. And those barriers pose huge upfront costs for people um, who want to audition or compete for all those um, opportunities. Just imagine going across the world so that you can perform in front of the International Panel of Judges um, you have to take the time off, you have to purchase the tickets, you have to invest in the hotels and all those logistics, time, money. The upfront cost is enormous and a lot of great musicians simply can't afford it. Um, and on top of it, this is on a remote chance or maybe not so remote chance, but still it's on the chance that you might win those opportunities. But you don't know. Maybe the judges will send you back after just 10, 15 minutes on stage. Let's hear the performance on a virtual stage from the oboist who comes from Japan. She was a contestant in one of the Sound Specific competitions and she was able to perform live in front of the panel of judges without having to travel from Japan to the United States. Let's hear that performance. Thank you. 
congratulations, Konomi. That was uh, that was amazing. Um, yeah, for somebody at the age of thirteen, uh, you play so virtuos virtuosically and musically. I think um, I see all the gestures. I see all the phrases that you're trying to convey. The Donizetti, you know, it's like you're a soprano, really bringing that to life, which is amazing. Do you listen to a lot of like bel canto, you know, uh, opera from like that? The, that year, like the late 1800s, do, do, do you listen to a lot of that opera, like Lucia de Lammermoor? Or, um... Um, not so much. Yeah, I would really listen to some of the singers and how they, how they go up, it, like in very fast notes mm -hmm. with runs. I know it's it's very difficult on on a double reed instrument, you know, to get these runs, but if you can kind of play through those runs, mm -hmm. you know, really almost almost um, running to the top of the hill. You know, when you're getting those runs, I think just just the fluency. I feel like I feel like you'll be able to express the the vocal style, which is exact, mm -hmm. which is what you're already wonderful at. But uh, congratulations, uh, and I look forward to seeing you on 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 bigger stages in the future. Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that I am uh, the Bible of music. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. My my point of view is, uh, if I would be you, I would start playing some. Mozart Tobo concerto, something simple, and build it up from there. You have all the talent to play those pieces in five years. Mm -hmm. This is what I think. Thank you so much. Arigato gozaimashita. Subarashikata des. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> Bravissimo. Uh, thank you so much, Konomi. It's, I, I've been hearing so much piano recently. It's wonderful to hear the oboe. Uh, so thank you so much for gracing us and coming to us from Japan and playing for us. This is it's spectacular. Thank you so much. Just to know that um, Konami was able to perform live in front of two conductors, two symphony conductors, one from the United States, the other from Italy, and um, to even get um, a little praise in her own native Japanese language. And she was able to answer questions and ask questions and communicate with the judges in real time. Just imagine all that packed in one moment of the audition um, in the previous times when we didn't have virtual stage, uh, she would have to spend days and weeks traveling all over the world to meet those musicians and uh, to network with them, to impress them with her playing and hopefully to um, connect for the future career and education and all the comments she got right there. And then this is all what is packed in the audition on the virtual stage. Now, let's mention another big barrier and obstacle, which is um, competing and auditioning with partners. What, just like with Konomi, she was playing with the pianist, right? Well, when you go to a competition across the world, maybe they'll have a pianist for you. Let's just leave it at that. But what if you're competing together with your partners? Just imagine the costs, the logistics, coordinating the schedules uh, for a group, like, for example, Klezmer Ensemble from Moscow, Russia, which we'll hear in a moment. Um, what if they were required to fly to the United States or to Europe in order to compete?
wonderful. Clearly, you know, you're leading that ensemble and it's, it's tremendously creative. You play so well together. Um, just the contrast of the, of the ideas and how they come forth. Bravo. I, I definitely hope to hear more uh, from you and from your ensemble. And I congratulate you on a wonderful performance. And then I just have an idea for you. Um, you know, clearly you are the leader of, of the ensemble. Um, and uh, I was wondering, you know, the clarinetist, you know, when you started, you told him to, to you know, please go down the octave. Yeah. Um, because, you know, um, you wanted to enter into that octave and that would have, you know, not, given the, the depth. Um, and it's interesting. I mean, I do a lot of leading that way. I really love that music, this uh, Ashkenaz uh, music, the, the, the spirit, the sadness, uh, and the irony at the same time going in opposition. And I really like it. I, I had listened already to your, uh, your group, and you are really making one uh, together. You know, you must have been playing for a long time. It's really, uh, you really are uh, interconnected. Hi. Um, unlike the previous judges, I have absolutely no experience of Kletzner beyond hearing a little bit of it um, over time, and not, I've always enjoyed it. Um, so I was really just, I was loving your violin playing, basically. Uh, I could sit and listen to you all day. It's touching, it's heartwarming, it's soulful, it's poignant. I love the colours you got in, it's in the quiet passages where the sound was very intimate and I felt drawn to that and I absolutely loved that. I loved it and I, I loved the energy and the, the way it touched my soul. Thank you. All right, so this was a Klezmer ensemble of professional musicians from Moscow, Russia, participating in the auditions. Um, Professional musicians means they have jobs. There's four of them. Just imagine traveling to a different country with four professionals for an audition. You can't even do it in two days. You need to take off like a whole week for that. And um, all the jobs, local the commitments, I don't even want to go there. The logistics of it are, to put in one word, prohibitive. Professionals need to put themselves out, be, become visible, be, um, become available. I, I have to, you know, they have, they have to also continue working in their career. It's not only for teenagers. For an ensemble like this, Klezmer Ensemble from Moscow, uh, participating in those um, uh, auditions and competitions for opportunities is just prohibitive. And on top of it, in just a short five minutes, um, they were able to hear comments from professional musicians of the highest caliber with international names from the UK, US, Austria, Canada, France, Italy. Now, how do you collect all those judges in one place? It's enormous. They have to travel too. They have to take off their teaching, their performing careers and everything they're doing. So if you want to provide this kind of opportunity for a contestants to have live feedback, to perform live in front of the, all those people. You have to basically schlep around dozens and dozens of people from different countries to different places. What kind of budget do you need? Well, the kind which makes it impossible for majority of um, initiative, majorities of organizations to even try to create something like this. Now, that is a challenge and a very <laughs> big obstacle for anyone who performs in an ensemble, but not only for all the instrumentalists, singers, and everyone who performs with an accompanist. What are you supposed to do? Bring your collaborative pianist across the world? Upfront costs of that are absolutely prohibitive. And it's not only the uh, money, it's also the time. So. That musician needs to take time. Um, and again, so we are working on removing really huge and very costly barriers by creating a virtual stage for everyone to connect in one place in real time. So next obstacle for pianists. I feel dearly towards pianists as a pianist myself. Um, and I've, of course, competed in, in 
in a lot of competitions at one point or another. And it's not a very uh, well um, appreciated challenge for pianists. We have to deal with unknown instruments. And we gotta quit complaining about it because what's the point? You have to deal with it anyway. But an unknown instrument can be a huge barrier, for, especially for less experienced pianists, those who may be geniuses and phenomenal musicians, but they just haven't gained the experience of walking up on stage to a completely new black beast and being able to command that instrument at their top of the ability. That's a very special training, and it's a very hard one. So what do you do? You crawl, cr travel across the world, um, pianist contestant walks on stage to a completely unfamiliar instrument. We don't know how the pedal works, how tall even it is, how heavy the keyboard is, and what kind of sound it's going to produce under different types of touch. Wonderful. You walk up on that stage fully prepared, all the money paid for all the travel, and things don't go the way you intended. We don't want pianos to work against us and other circumstances. We want those to work for us. Wouldn't it be better for a pianist to compete in the habitual environment, performing on the instrument which they know in and out, so that they can deliver their best? Let's hear from a young pianist in California. I think that you have a great talent and you have all your life ahead of you. So tell everybody around you that there is plenty of time for you to become a great pianist because you already are. Great job, Kento. It was so much fun to hear you play. Hey, can I ask you a question? If you were to describe the character of that first movement of Beethoven C major piano concerto you just played, what would a character be? It's like grumpy, happy, bored, like excited. excited. Which one? Like excited? I think so too. Yeah, I would, I would say also, um, if you can kind of make us feel that excitement, I can see you're feeling it, but, but imagine there's like 600 people in the audience and you're trying to get them just as excited as you are. What a wonderful performance. Uh, Kianta, I'm so glad to listen to you today. And I think uh, it's great achievement uh, what you did today. Uh, to play Beethoven and, the, and your age, it's it's really great. Kento, thanks so much for your playing. It's obviously, as my colleague said, this is very impressive and uh, congratulations to you and your teacher. Once you get to about your second page or two of your solo, you start to have uh, these uh, chakachuras, jump, 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 and, and everything, it's, I think Beethoven is signaling to us that there's also, it's very funny, right? There are very few composers who are able to capture humor so effectively, and I think Beethoven and Haydn and Debussy are among the three who who really do that at a high level. And, and so the more that you can feel that, if in fact you do think it's funny, um, that I think you can bring that out much more at times. 
for someone so young as Kenta, the opportunity to perform in his teacher's studio with the pianist accompanying him, with whom he played many times, rehearsed many times, and to be able to actually focus on the music, not focusing on, oh, that chair is really not fitting me, oh, this key is sticking out, oh, all this stuff is really distracting. Now, uh, let's see what the comments are saying. We welcome all ages. Um, let's see. It makes me ha so happy that the judges can contribute to performers' education and development and that there are live interactions. Exactly. The judges on our panel are really very generous, very giving musicians with a huge experience, and they really um, appreciate very much an opportunity to just tell the performer what they would like to contribute to help them grow. Uh, that immediate interaction is a, a great vehicle for musicians to connect. Let's see, do we have any more comments in there? Um, I can think of anyone else, anywhere else that I've seen this except for TV talent shows. Exactly. Well, TV talent shows are created by people who understand the environment and um, they've dug really deep. They are ahead of us classical musicians. Um, they know how to create the environment which is both engaging and um, has great opportunities and entertaining too um you know let's not discount that music is a is a show so uh, it needs to be entertaining it needs to be interesting and engaging um yep so uh, any other comments not only then familiarity with the instrument it's um, usually a different piano that we have to warm up on exactly <laughs> yeah thank you james um for mentioning that yes you warm up in one piano then you play on another and for someone as young as kenta um this would just mean that a big chunk of his attention would be focused on overcoming unfamiliarity with an instrument as opposed to focusing on what he can deliver uh, with his musicality and how he can really uh, apply his talent to the music of it, not the mechanics. All right, so given all of those, um, what can we do? Well, we can just use video submissions for adjudication. Why not? Musicians can record the video and send this to any competition and audition we just ask them to record it and be done with it um issues gone not so fast did i mention before that we continuously work with highest level professionals across related fields and disciplines that we work with educators performers um audio video specialists managers, presenters, publishers, many, many, many people from all those related fields. Well, there are a lot of problems with eliminating completely the live performance from competitions or auditions formats and adjudicating performances purely based on submitted video recordings. Complaints come from every side. Let me just list the complaints, even without going into very complicated details. Contestants complain about their videos being adjudicated instead of their live performances. Why? Okay, let's list the problems. Uneven quality of videos. Some videos come from highly high-level professional studios, while other musicians can't afford them. Contestants rightfully complain that adjudicating videos creates unavoidable favoritism towards people who have more money. It's the same thing, just a flip coin, of um, requiring people to travel across the world for an in-person competition. Whoever has more money can hire a better studio and a better space and record a better video. Now, um, contestants also complain that um, if it's a, um, a dedication based on the video, say they send the video and then they wait forever and that they don't even know how much they need to wait for um, the results. Especially everyone is looking for the results in terms of judges' comments. So the judges' comments often come very late, but even more so, they seem very generic. And they don't come as useful for people's further progress. Every time you compete, let's say, of course you compete for the prizes. Let's say you don't win the prize. You want to know why. 
let's say you do win a prize, you still want to know why. So there is no way to ask why. Why did I win? Or why didn't I win? And uh, what can I do better next time? You get the generic comments, of which obviously, you know, they're not in the moment. And the judges um, are not able to give them in the moment. They have to watch those videos. They have a list of videos. They watch them. And so forth. It's, a, it's a process which is very detached and remote from the live performance. And I, I can understand, you know, uh, when you adjudicate videos for a project like a video recording or filming or studio recording, that's different. But you're adjudicating those videos for the purpose of inviting people to perform live. This is very remote and unrelated. Adjudicators complain, rightfully. We don't know how many takes it took this particular musician or that particular musician to record this seemingly perfect performance. That's a very important point. When people compete for an opportunity to perform, adjudicators get a video. The first question they ask, was that video recorded during a live performance at a concert with audience in there? Of course not, most of the time. It's recorded in a studio setting. Um, how many times did you have to play that piece through before you got that recording done so well? Because you're not going to have two, three, four, five chances. You're going to have one chance, which is difficult, but also very, very beautiful. Because in that one chance of a performance, an artist puts it all. In the recording, I've recorded a lot. It's very hard to put it all in every take. You, take, you do 20 takes, 30 takes, 10 takes, even three. It's very hard to perform each one of those three takes as though you're on stage. Yeah, we work on that. And we try to achieve that as much as possible. But it's trying to achieve, again, working against the barrier. And another question, of course, which every adjudicator has, and with the advent of a lot of new um, editing tools and so forth, uh, they rightfully say, say that we don't know how the musician will perform under pressure of a live concert. We just don't know. We can't know that because this was done in the recording studio. Conductors. Now, <laughs> if you want to play with the orchestra, you need to audition in front of the conductors because conductors are the ones who know what is going to work for the season, what is going to work with their ensemble, obviously. Conductors complain, we need to know how the uh, performer will play with the orchestra in the real time. <laughs> okay, if you're playing solo and you made a mistake, you can still thumble around and get out of the problem. But if you make a mistake with the orchestra, good luck with that. It's a hundred people who need to somehow play together. It's a completely different beast. And there's so many other details which conductors need to really see in the moment of your performance before they can say, come on, let's play together Beethoven Concerto with my orchestra. Managers and concert organizers. We hear a lot of complaints from them as well. Um, they need to decide whether or not they, they can or want and uh, see that's a good fit to work with this musician on the next steps. Let's say maybe signing them on for their uh, presentation or maybe taking them on a tour or maybe giving a scholarship for the um, program where they can, you know, expand and uh, grow their ability to be musician than before. <coughs> but managers and concert organizers need to know that they, or at least get a sense, that they can work with you as an artist and as a person, because they're looking at a somewhat longer term of relationship with you. They need to get um, a sense of personality, which doesn't come through on the video as well as it does in a live performance, especially on a virtual stage which we created, there's an opportunity to interact. Let's say a manager is looking for, um, to, to give an opportunity to go on a week tour, only a week. Still, a week can be really unpleasant if the personalities don't match. And it can be extraordinarily um, wonderful if the personalities do match. 
concert presenters and organizers um, can't, they complain that they can't get, gauge whether or not they have a good chance uh, to create a good chemistry working with a musician before they uh, have to announce the awards um, based on the video that makes it, again, very remote and very difficult to, to assess. Now, and now everyone complains about this aspect of videos. There is no way to tell especially with the new AI tools and other tools and all this technology ever going at 90 miles an hour forward, there's no way to tell if the recording is recent. Maybe it's from 10 years ago. And since then you didn't practice that well. Or even more importantly, there's no way to tell if the recording was not altered and unedited. And those suspicions are very difficult for contestants to accept either because contestants rightfully complain that they absolutely hate to be a perpetual subject of the suspicions of dishonesty. Yes, I recorded this in one take. I did not put any amplification. I did not change any levels on my recording. I did not do anything. I did not put any reverb. I did it completely honestly. Why are you suspecting me of that? Well, because it's not a live performance, it's a recording. It's a fertile field for a lot of tension, which is very unnecessary. Just play live. Simple. So our solution is virtual stage. What is virtual stage? It solves a lot, of, not all, but a lot of problems. It's live. It's direct. It provides immediate commenting from the judges before they forgot how you sounded. It provides for contestants and the judges to ask each other questions, to communicate, to create a relationship, to get a sense of each other. It's cheap and it allows you to perform in your own, the most supportive environment. But what about the technology involved? <laughs> of course, <laughs> now, now you have to deal with technology. <laughs> Back to square one, right? No. How do we promise to create an even field on the virtual stage, which is so demanding to technology? Let's be straightforward about it. Our solution to that obstacle and barrier, labor of love. Let's see where- Go to the bottom the middle, there should be a setting, setting called, called cam, cam mic. mic. Go to the audio, audio tab. tab. And yeah. there should be a there setting be a called setting stereo, stereo audio. audio. Can you turn that on by mm -hmm. clicking on it? Is it on now? Yeah. Does it ask you to refresh or no? No, it doesn't. Okay. And then go to the camera tab in there on the left. And then click on show advanced options and make sure that you have the highest resolution selected. Okay. Sorry? Uh, can you go again to cam mic settings? I'm not sure that you are stereo the settings, that you have the right settings. Yeah, you should turn stereo audio on. Stereo audio should be on and uh, echo cancellation off. Yeah, okay, great, thanks. Your microphone is very good, but it shouldn't uh, stay on the piano. I think it's touching the piano. Can it be moved? Yeah, it shouldn't touch any of the piano because of the vibrations. Yeah, it's, it's still... Sorry. Let's try to, to take it outside of the piano. It's, it's too much inside of the piano, yeah? It's speaking too much. Can we raise the camera so it's looking a little bit higher from above? Yeah, As opposed yeah. to like this? And maybe a little bit in distance so we can see full piano a little bit farther away. Farther away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now you can see the lights. That's okay, we can move lights yeah, out of the yeah. frame. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, mic's so getting mic's overloaded a bit. What kind of mic are you using? Uh, a USB mic. Um, Does it have uh, a gain on it? Uh, no, it just has like a, a mute on it. Now I can adjust the slider on my end. Yeah, yeah the slider, slider on, on StreamYard, StreamYard isn't, isn't what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, I'm looking for the gain of the mic, so you would have to go to the, the computer settings for that. It's going to be audio settings. Yeah, on the sound. And then when you get there, there will be a tab, input and output tabs. 
Yeah. And you want to go to the input, and then so the volume the slider on there, there, you want to lower, like, by, I don't know, 30%? percent Are we sure it's on? Can you just tap on it? Yeah. I think it is. Yeah, okay, nice. Okay. I would recommend... Wait, it's a hard piece, I'm also a pianist, so... Yes, very difficult. <laughs> I would recommend, so we lower just like 4 by 4. So it should be 56 or something like that. Just for safety, because you have a lot of fortissimos in this piece. Yes. Um, can you can you distance the microphone a little bit further away and then raise the gain? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, let's keep it like that. That's nice. Yes. Labor of Love coming from uh, the show producers and directors and um, audio and video engineers and uh, broadcast designers, our team is the key to creating the even field. Before you step on the virtual stage, you get a full A to Z complete checkup of everything you have uh, prepared in, in terms of your tech through the ears of the same people who will tech check everyone else. And these people are professional musicians. No more uneven field. Some engineer thinks that, another engineer thinks that this, and everybody sounds with a different setup. No, we create an even field by putting forward enormous effort by the same people who will uh, do the background, the, the, the tech checks and work on the background um, through every audition sessions. Now, I want to just tell one of the, we have so many stories. Through four years of uh, running the virtual stage on the virtual concert halls, uh, we produced sh those programs for thousands of musicians. Um, it's uh, it's enormous. One story comes to my mind. There was this Armenian um, singer, and uh, she's phenomenal. You'll hear her in a second. And her tech just would not work just would not work up to the level where our uh, should, uh, our directors wanted it to be. Now, virtual stage allows some flexibility. She was scheduled to perform at, let's say, 4 o'clock. And it's already 3.30 and her tech is not working. She's in the virtual green room and uh, several people are working with her and it's just not working. Okay. It, on the virtual stage, within parameters of the virtual concert halls, we were able to inform the judges that she's going to perform, but a little bit later, which gave her um, support group, her friends, and um, to go out to the nearby store and get a suitable microphone. So they came back, and it's not very expensive, $120. She was able to afford it. Uh, not not as expensive as flying across the world again, right? So they brought the microphone and they were able to install together with our support group. Um, everything was finally done and she was able to perform live like, like nothing happened um, on, on the stage with the best setup possible and she went on winning a lot of awards in the competition. Let's hear Osmik's performance.
Thank you very much, Asmik. It was really a wonderful performance. I, I'm a cellist, and once I also played a, an arrangement of this piece because I love it so much. Yeah. And I thought that you really managed to express it very well. I loved your way of communication, and you have a wonderful control over your voice. And I think you can really um, go places with your voice. What I would perhaps add to what you already have, all the wonderful abilities that you have, is to also perhaps even go more pianissimo or more piano in some places and express that even more. You have a beautiful and expressive uh, approach to it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I would love to hear a little bit more connectedness of the lines through your vibrato. You tend to have the, the line and then the vibrato comes and the line continues in the vibrato kind of. And I, so I would love to see that your vibrato has a more of a through line with the with the connectedness of it. But your, I love your, your diction is excellent, uh, really clear and very, um, you know, very understandable. That is if I understood the language, but very, very clear diction. Um, and I love the color in your low range. Well, thank you very much. That was very beautiful. And um, first of all, I admire the fact that you're so at ease in front of a camera in a room where there's not an actual physical audience in front of you. It seems very natural for you to perform to a, on media rather than <laughs> to an actual audience. Um, I enjoyed the range. I enjoyed the quality of the sound. I think vibrato as well is a thing which I'd like to hear a bit more variety in. Um, one of the great joys of singing is, is, is vibrato quality, but sometimes I wanted to hear you float a little bit more on, on a quieter, a better sound somehow. With, um, mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Just a, yes, just a, a, a more, a more mm -hmm. floated quali um, quality of sound sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. But I thought that, but I thought, you know, basically it was very, very beautiful. You, you act very naturally and um, it, was, it was very, very beautiful. It's a marvelous, marvelous piece of music. And what a gift to a singer to be able to have repertoire of that sort. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you. I thought it was very beautiful. All right, this was very, very beautiful. In your natural environment, you're so comfortable. You sound so great. After two hours, three hours of working on it. And that's the labor of love, which we provide everyone who steps on the virtual stage of the virtual concert halls. And I haven't even started to speak about the other side of all of this, the audience, people who want to hear more music, people who want to hear a variety of artists, people who want to hear and watch music being performed live. And there are a lot of barriers for those people too. Um, but that's um, a conversation for another time. And I promise we'll get to those topics as well in our upcoming broadcasts. Now, uh, throughout our season, we host and produce dozens of events aimed at helping musicians get forward with their goals. And for some people, maybe it's a next step to perform at the Carnegie Hall. And you still have two days, today and tomorrow, you can apply for this um, cycle of auditions for performances at the Carnegie Hall. But for some other people, it's performing with orchestras and this and that and another. We uh, have a lot of help from our partners and collaborators to provide a variety of those opportunities from performances with orchestras and on prestigious stages to scholarships to attend master courses, programs, uh, to uh, get on a tour and to record and produce and um, to publish your albums. There's a lot. Please visit our website, uh, uh, competition com or our partner sites, uh, progressivemusicians.com. Um, and just to take a few minutes to look at what's coming this season. We just started and there's a lot coming up. So we provide all these many other opportunities. Um, so let's just take a quick overlook over um, the, the season.
get involved. Uh, come and join us, join our uh, mission and our vision, um, our all-inclusive programs and projects. We welcome participants of all ages, from student to professional, of all instruments, voice, um, all nationalities, ensembles, um, all orientations. It's all-inclusive um, and all the differences which uh, may be dividing people in other fields, they are have no place in music. Music does, what music does best is connects and unites people. So just one more mention, tomorrow and today, you still can apply <clears throat> and join us community, our community um, for the uh, Carnegie Hall uh, uh, Gala auditions. Um, and But if you miss this deadline, don't worry about it. There's more coming up, different programs, um, and a lot of awards. You can become eligible to uh, win those awards by participating in any one of our events. And if you're a manager, concert presenter, uh, director of the orchestra, um, publisher, anything related to music and performing arts, um, get in touch with us. Get involved. Um, see if we can do something together. Let's um, support each other and create more projects which open up doors and opportunities for artists and musicians from around the world. And once again, today and tomorrow, you still can apply to perform on the stage of the Carnegie Hall at the upcoming gala on November 21st. Hey, check this out. I know you have always dreamed of performing in Carnegie Hall. So I think this 2023 to 2024 season at Sound Espresivo would be perfect for you. As a platform, we host live online auditions so you can share your music with the entire world. Then we send you to incredible in-person venues like Carnegie Hall so you can perform solo, as a duo, as an ensemble, and with orchestra. This year, we have a total of four gala events at Carnegie Hall, as well as four different opportunities to perform with orchestras in the US, in the Czech Republic, and even in Egypt. We want to help you fulfill your musical dreams. Go to soundespressivocompetition.com to check out our season and to apply. Yes, check us out, apply, um, or just get in touch, get involved. Send us a message, leave a comment. Uh, we are um, always open to um, get in touch and send you a message back. Communicate. Let's communicate. Let's find what we can do together. And we are on every major platform. You can find us on Instagram, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Vimeo, on Facebook, and um, many other platforms and uh, on platforms of our partners too. So we are there and we are present. We communicate. And thank you so much, all of the supporters, all of the uh, organizations from around the world, from every continent, which are joining us and adding their energy and their resources to our movement forward, um, helping provide more opportunities, more live music, more connection with the audience, just more arts, more peace, and more love. And uh, we want to thank our phenomenal team which created virtual concert halls and created this virtual stage for everyone to step on uh, perform be uh, noticed be visible share their music for um everyone in the audience to connect and enjoy thank you very much the a wonderful team behind the scenes and i want to thank Andy bozic kudrich who is the director of this program so all of the effects and all of the visuals and everything you saw during this program is um his cre creation thank you Ante. Ante is a pianist and um, a young composer in residence for virtual counter halls for this season. You he hear a lot of his soundtracks throughout our programs. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone on our team. And with this, I'm going to say goodbye to our uh, audience today. Join us again tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern Standard, which is lunchtime for the United States or tea time in the UK or whatever you can call it, depending on your time zone. See you again soon. Bye now.